Guys, we are very honoured and we're so happy to be meeting you tonight. It's the gorgeous Maro from Portugal. How are you doing? I'm good, especially now with the Aperol Spritz. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I don't, well, I don't, I'm hoping you guys can see this, but we're traditional Italian uh, Aperol Spritz. I've had far too many, but this is your first since you've been in Turin, right? Yeah, I mean, in a while. I think the last one was in 2012, I'm pretty sure. Because that's when I went to Milano with some friends and we tried it there. Oh, wow, you've got a good memory. Yeah, 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 but it's been a while, so... I mean, this this is perfect. Ah, so I have to ask first of all, because it's, it feels like such a long time since Festival de Cancel. Well, no, it's not that. Was it February, wasn't it? Fe- March? Ma- early March. March. March, yeah. It feels like ages. How does it feel now to be here in Turin, kind of walking out onto that Eurovision stage? It's, I mean, I, I imagine it must be like a dream. You having to pinch yourself, slap yourself in the face to <laughs> kind of... Yeah, it's... It's interesting because it, it, it feels both kind of like, wow, it's been forever. And at the same time, it feels like it was last week, uh, especially now that we're here. We're like, wow, like last week we were doing kind of the same thing. But now it's so much bigger and with so many more people. And um, yeah, I think we're all just so excited to, to be living this. It's, it's so cool. It's such a privilege to, to get to be a part of it, you know. Yeah, and obviously we've been lucky because we've seen kind of a run through of your rehearsals now. We've seen this beautiful staging uh, that you've come up with. How involved were you in that concept, first of all? Uh, well, I, I, I get to say if I like it, if I don't like it, what I want or closer to this or closer to that. But um, in this case, it was perfect because uh, Daniel Mota, our director um, and creative director also, um, he just kind of, you know, said well i'm thinking about this what do you think and i was just like that's perfect that's that's the exact vibe uh, i was looking for so in this case it was it was just easy to find something that uh, made sense to me um so yeah that, i guess that's that's the most involved that i am with all of it but did it feel like do you feel quite emotional because it's like seeing your like what you have in your head your vision when you watch it back kind of after the first rehearsal and you see all the staging come together and also you you've got your girls there as well um do you get like quite my how do you feel as an artist thinking wow this has all just come together and it's exactly what we were planning for it i definitely get emotional first of all because since we're singing it in a circle it's so easy to just kind of look to my left or to my right or you know right in front of me and just like there's my friends everywhere and we're all singing together uh, a song that is so meaningful to me and you know I, I I can't help but think of my granddad every time we sing it and so yeah. and you know my whole family that is with me w- while I'm doing this and uh, it yeah it's it's so special and especially seeing it all come together suddenly when we're at, on stage that's something but then when you watch the rehearsal clip back that's when you see also the lights behind you and the, the fog and all these things and you're like wow that's it really it's what you're saying it's like suddenly the vision kind of t- you know becomes something real like uh palpable it's so cool it's is just it like so watching cool. someone else though is yeah it, are you watching it thinking god that's me yeah yeah a bit kind of it's there's always this weird feeling of like seeing yourself doing something yeah it's like almost doesn't feel real <laughs> Oh, well, we've loved watching it. I have to say, I love uh, how you've kind of, uh, you've got the circle with your friends. And it's, and I've, I've said about this, I said sometimes that wouldn't work with staging, but with this song, it just fits so perfectly. And it's almost like you're getting energy from each other as you're performing as well. And the, the kind of harmonizing with your vocals is so important for this song. Does it help kind of being in that configuration, getting that energy from, you know, from your friends? Does it, does it help with the vocal performance, do you think? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think n- not to sound super, uh, I don't even know, like, uh, but I think we're all professional enough to, you know, be on point anyways, whatever the circumstance is. We, we would just kind of get used to whatever we would do. But in this case, it's like you get maybe like emotionally more attached to which makes the vocal even if you could you could sing it well anyways technically but maybe this way we're gonna sing it 
better because there's the, the, the feeling is, is much easier to grasp when yes. we sing in a circle. So maybe in that sense, yeah. And, and that's super special. Yeah, it, it does look really special on stage. Now, when I first heard uh, your song, and you have to forgive me because I'm like the worst person at trying to pronounce, <laughs> saudade, saudade. Yeah. How was yeah. that? It was actually really, really good. Okay, okay, okay. I'm getting better. Every year I'm getting better. But uh, I, for me, and I said this, I said it's like, an, it's like an orgasm in my ears. Your voice is just like honey pouring over me. And I feel like I want to close my eyes every time I hear the song. And uh, obviously the song has meaning to you. When I listen to the song, I imagine myself kind of lie back on a beach and no one around, just hearing the waves. Um, it's just a really, really stunning song. But obviously, because the meaning of the song, people have tried to explain this to me. Uh, maybe I'll let you explain exactly what saudade, saudade means. So, saudade is the word we use for, uh, you know, missing something or somebody. So if, if I miss my granddad, I have saudade of him. That's, that's kind of how we always say it in, in, in Portuguese. And um, yeah, the, the, the song is, you know, he, he just passed away end of 2020. And he was, you know, truly he and my grandma, who thank God is still alive. Um, they're really my, my best friends. I, I grew up at their house and, and we're 10 cousins and we're just always there and we're like siblings. And it's, it, it was always such a special safety bubble uh, and you know so much so 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 much love that um when he passed it was it was kind of i mean obviously you know that at some point that's going to happen mm. but it's so at least for me it has been so hard to grasp like the fact that he's just not here anymore on the physical like i can't just go to his house and kiss him and so the 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 song really came about that you know yeah, and and it starts like I've tried to write a million other songs because that's actually what happened like ever since it happened and up until I wrote so that there's so many songs that just like are about him and about him and about him and and suddenly so that was just one more that that actually went to festival and suddenly it's getting uh you know all this projection and people connecting with it but uh yeah it's it's about that just how big he was in my life uh, and and how much I m miss him, like how much, yeah, there's like, just like so that, that's really like the, the word. It's like uh, you say, you, you know, that you can't hug him now, but you're hugging him every time you perform yeah. this song because it must be like there's a connection with him every time and he's going to be so proud of you knowing that you've done this. I mean, what an amazing tribute to someone who's very special in your yeah. life and I, w I want to hear about kind of the memories of when you were younger you know you were saying you were all around the house I mean what was it like being you know with your grandparents in this all 10 of you in this house what were you doing what was so special about those times what do you remember just everything about it, you know first of all it's it's just like we're always together every time there's someone's birthday or Christmas or just it's just like anything anything was a reason to kind of all get together and, and let's just hang. Um, and I don't know, like memories of my granddad, there's so many amazing ones, like the little things he would do, like how in love he was with food and was showing us good food or like the way he would call me chiquitinha, like, or he would do the, he was always kind of like, I don't know, he would call me kind of like, choo, 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 like this <laughs> and like, it's like all these little things that, that I, I, you know, it's kind of like, don't, get to hear anymore but there's it's it's a list of infinite memories i think like so many people that also have like strong connections with their families or or best friends or you know other people that kind of like are in your life um but it was just yeah i, I mean i guess it's not that rare in portugal because we're such a con like a family oriented country um and i was just lucky enough to have that too you know but exactly with like 10 cousins and like so my grandparents had four kids, which, yeah, you know, yeah. with husbands and wives, there's like eight. So immediately there's 10 and then 10 were cousins. So we're always like 20. And then my grandma has tons of siblings and my grandpa has tons of siblings. So there's, it's just, and, and really like we're, we still try and get together every time, even like the further away cousins. So it's just, it's just cool. It's just very family oriented, the, my whole life. And it's great. It's great.
I feel like I want an invite to the next get together that you guys have because it sounds like a lot of fun. It is, it is, and you'd you'd be invited. I mean, all of my best friends are kind of like they have been adopted by my grandma and my well, my granddad at the time, yeah. And it's just you know, I've had friends spending Christmas and uh, yeah, it's just it's very you're more than welcome anytime you want. I, I, like I'm going to take that as an invitation. My yeah, my yeah, mum yeah. might get mad, so I need to say sorry, Brenda. <laughs> Um, <laughs> or go like the day after Christmas so that you spend Christmas with her and then you come just all right okay home. we can we can work with that we can work with that but the thing is this this song because it's so personal to you obviously it's personal to all of your cousins and your siblings as well and kind of what's the when they knew that you were going to be taking this song to Festival de Cancel kind of what was the reaction it was actually I, I I remember I cried with their messages when I went to do the first semi-final in Portugal because they were all just saying you know, first of all, I was nervous. I had never done anything on TV or never like sung at a competition because I'm a bit against competition generals. Even though this is much, co- this is, doesn't feel like a competition. Uh, that's why I've been enjoying it so much. Realizing, wow, it does actually just there's the cool side of the competition, but not the bad side. But um, and they all messaged kind of, you know, you're singing to these bunch of cameras, but actually you're, you know, we're we're all with you and we're all it's like it every camera is like some sort of way to get to grandpa and he's listening and uh he's so proud and we're all so proud and and you got to put in words and in a gorgeous song what we all feel so thank you and um the fact that they were so loving towards it and and really kind of you know thank you for saying what we wanted to say made me I don't know. I don't know. It's like suddenly I I was confident to go and sing it because it was so much more than the the competition, you know, like the TV thing. It was kind of it became bigger than that. Yeah. I mean, this is what I love about Eurovision because getting to talk to someone like you about the meaning of your song and what it means and where it's come from, it just it kind of takes it to a whole another level for me. I mean. Uh, you know, I, I listen to the melody. I listen to the instrumentation of the song. I always call it a close my a close my eyes song because that's what I do whenever I listen to it. Um, does that sound weird for me to say that to you? No. It's just it's like I close my eyes and it's just it just takes me somewhere else. But actually hearing from you, who's who's created this and where it's come from and what it means to you, just makes it so much more special. And I feel like you've encapsulated that in the in the staging as well. And one thing we're very yeah. excited about that I know you are is. Uh, we've got some Eurovision smoke effect as well. <laughs> yeah, I I just love it. I don't know. It, it's like, it almost just kind of calms us before. It, it's like, whatever level of nervousness there is, the second the fog starts coming out and the the lights go like, and then the song starts. <laughs> yeah, usually, usually exactly you're nervous, but then the fog kind of starts coming out, and I I don't know what it is about it, but it immediately relaxes me. It's like, oh, it's like, so I don't know. It kind of makes it like, okay, we're in our living room singing together and we're all like such good friends singing such a special song and, and that's it. Uh, it's gorgeous, yeah. Yeah, well, it, it does look beautiful. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you see a little secret. I was at the press centre today and I know you weren't there, so I'm not going to pin this on you, okay. but the fire alarm was going off. Um, not your fault, not your fault. You okay. weren't rehearsing today. I weren't rehearsing. But I wasn't rehearsing. No, when you've got when you've got like a Eurovision smoke machine on stage, it's when you know you've made it. Wow! Well, but you, the alarm went off because of that. No, 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 no. It's, it was today. It was today. No, I know, I know, I know. But like it, it went like even today, it went on because of someone. I don't, using smoke? I don't, I don't oh, think okay. so. I think it might. Maybe it was a test. I don't gotcha, know. Gotcha. I no one, like, no one ran out the building anyway. So. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> I'm sure everything was all right. Um, gotcha. But, you know, this is such a big platform for you. But obviously, you've, you know, you've had a career leading into this as well. And, I, and we have to say uh, you've done a recent release. Uh, I'm going to get the title of this wrong. I want to call it We're Loving, We're Loving in Silence. Yeah, we've been loving in silence. We've been loving in silence. Yeah, it's close enough. It was, it was great. But how are, you, uh, how are you feeling about this platform now to launch you kind of outside of Portugal and to a, a wider audience? Because, I mean, it's a, you know, I don't want to put any pressure on it, but it's a huge audience. Yeah. Well, I don't, I think I, I'm kind of hoping that whoever finds out about my music and my work and connects with it kind of just wants to stay and, and, and 
you know, stay for the ride and just keep on listening and see what I'm up to, like work-wise and everything. Um, but also no, no pressure, you know, but I'm sure exactly, it's like such a privilege to get to showcase some of my work, at least to so many people and, and hopefully have some relate to it that, that, that already is already so worth it. Yeah, and the support like back home for you has been huge as well. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it's it's getting like right now it's getting bigger and bigger. Maybe because we're getting closer to the date, but I think at first obviously when I won there's also people that were supporting other Portuguese artists and so there's still like, you know, there's people that are like, "Yeah, Mara," and there's other people that are like, "Oh, she sucks. She can't sing. She blah blah." And uh which is which is fine. I I totally get it. His opinions and everything, but I think you know, luckily for me, it started kind of narrowing, narrowing it down to, you know, just people that really are just showing love and supporting. And and I think that's so important to feel like, you know, you're doing something that it's under like the name of your country. And I'm such a proud Portuguese woman, you know, that um, it just feels it's so special to feel like the, the Portuguese as a, you know, like nation are with me. Um, so it's, I feel like it's, that's getting bigger and I'm so happy to witness it. Yeah. Well, we're all on the ride with you. I mean, I'm on the, I'm on the Maru bus. <laughs> I'm with you on this. I'm, like your voice it's it's just, it's so, you know, so many people have said this to you, but it's so unique. When did you kind of know that you had this gift for, for singing? I, it, it was, it was late actually. Uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've studied music since I was four, so I, I sang, and I started writing when I was 11, so I, I, I did music, but I didn't really show it to anybody because I would never sing in front of anybody, you know. And it was when I was 16, 17, I started singing like a bit in like church choirs and stuff like where, you know, it was fine because people weren't really looking at me because we were serving some other purpose. Um, and so really when I, when I started like singing and, you know, by myself kind of like, this is me, this is Maro, I sing. Was, I, I was 20 and it was when I went to study in, in Boston, like at Berkeley. Um, and that's when I also started, because I started, you know, singing. And with that, I started seeing people reacting. I think that's when I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> Maybe something happens that I'm not aware. Uh, and it's, it's been such a journey also, because, you know, your voice kind of, you keep on changing throughout time and just saying like, oh, I like when I do this and finding more and more like your style, so. Uh, yeah, but it's pretty late. Like but how, how has it been like kind of finding that confidence then for maybe being someone that kind of just doing it in your, you know, in your private space, you know, writing these songs, singing to yourself? Like, how, how do you feel you found that confidence? Did it take a long time to come before you thought, actually, you know, I can do this on a stage. I can do this publicly in front yeah. of people. I think luckily for me, I had the whole kind of like technical side on my side, <laughs> so I, I I knew I knew what I was doing confidently in when it comes to, to music, you know, to harmony, to rhythm. Like I knew I was like I that's that's what I'm good at, uh, and you know just but, but exactly I was bad at kind of like well I'm gonna go sing, but I think maybe I the fact that I I got in like I got in to Berkeley um, and kind of went and just crossed the ocean to, to go immediately was a, well, now I've, I've done it, now I'm here. Uh, and it's so hard to get in, it's so hard to get a scholarship. I got it. I need to take advantage of it. And so I think I kind of left all of my shyness away and it's kind of like, well, well, now you're here, like just do it. And, and then it was great because it's three years of a, a degree where you get to perform, you know, with friends, but also for other people, um, like often. And so, you know, a semester goes by and two and three and four and suddenly seven semesters later, it's just like I'm, I'm totally like it's like stages home. And there's all, obviously always that like, OK, I'm about to go do it. But the second I would start and that still happens, the second I start, it's kind of like, ah, oh, this is what I love to do. There's no reason to be shy about it, you know. And look at you now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now it's a little more. It's Literally a little on like one of the biggest audience. stages in the world. Oh my god! Yeah, but at least they're like you know on their TVs. It's a bit easier, maybe. I don't know. No, I think, I think my rule, and that really really helps me, is that it needs to touch me. 
if it makes sense to me, if it has meaning to me, whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm singing and playing and writing, uh, there's no way it's gonna be really hard to do it in front of somebody else because the second I start doing it, it's there's a connection. And especially the stuff I wrote is like, I know where it came from. So the second I start doing it, it's like I go back to that same safe place, you know? And then when it, you know, right before or when it ends, maybe I can get a bit nervous. But it's, it's funny because when I start and throughout, it's like my, my whole self just goes into this space where I really feel what I wrote, um, which I don't know. I think that's what makes it easy at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. But it can probably be quite difficult as well because you're literally putting the whole of yourself out there for everyone to see did you ever have uh, any doubts about uh, singing such a personal a very very personal song uh, in such a kind of public arena no no i mean may, at the beginning i thought well maybe i don't need to say ever that it's about my granddad that was the only thought about it but no not the singing i mean i when i wrote it it, it, it was really like kind of happened in 15 minutes with this friend of mine and and I don't know, it's such a just genuine feeling and it was kind of like what came out that I immediately had a connection with it. So it's not only just the kind of like, oh, I don't want to show it. It's more like, wow, I really love it and I really want to sing this. Um, so yeah, I, I luckily I don't, I don't feel that. And I, I don't know, I don't think I'm, I can't see myself feeling that ever, but who knows? Yeah, well, I was going to say you made the right decision to, <laughs> say, because you shared you shared it with us, and it is a song that um, so many people, you know, will have lost someone, or so many people will take their yeah. own meaning from this, and it will be like you said, you know, a hug with your granddad. It's going to be like a, a hug for other people, yeah. and lots of people, especially now, need that as well. So it's, you know, it it will have touched, and we've heard from people that watch our channel that it, it's touched them as well so it's a it's a special gift to anyone that's that's lost anyone now i have i do have a little surprise for you because we've been in turin a little while now um and on the first night that we arrived uh, we were just walking around looking for uh somewhere to go for a drink for a yeah. while for an aperol spritz and we found this place and we felt like it might have been a little good luck charm no way this is huge. in like the big square in the center of turin Oh, that's so cool. Isn't it? And also, you see this? Yeah, yeah. <gasps> no way. <laughs> I have a, a toucan tattooed on my arm. If that's not a good omen, I wow, don't know what that's, is. That's amazing. But we've Usually so that with the toucan. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and we've, got, and we've got it twice as well. See? Oh, that's amazing. And, you know, Brazilian, which for me, it's like my second home, so... Wow, that's a thank you for showing this. It's like so. One thing you have to do before you leave Turin go is go and have a drink and your photo taken at this bar. We just thought it was such a good omen for it, you. It's amazing. Th thank you, really. Well, we need to go. I can't believe the tattoo has freaked me out a little bit now. I know it's a it's a little toucan. I don't know if you can see. Is that but your only tattoo? No, I have a few others. Are, are they like in places that you can tell us about? Well, I have one here. Um, which is my grandma's name, actually, oh. that same grandma. Well, the, from the granda. And then I have here on my heels, I don't yeah, know how to say yeah, yeah. it. Uh, Gargish, that will be a difficult one to explain, but it's related to Brazil. Okay. And then just little ones on my fingers that are kind of gone, but... I'm I'll be honest, I can't see those ones. No. <laughs> it's like, you see? They're like pretty much gone. They are. You I'm need to get them redone. Them. I'm going to redo them. Well, I'll tell you what, like, when you qualify through to the final, maybe you could go and get a celebratory tattoo. Oh, but then I go to the final with all these, like, plasters things. After the final. After the final. After the final. After the final. Go, there's loads of tattoo like, places. In right, Turin. when I win the whole thing. But what would you get? Uh, just ear of vision on my forehead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I... I might shake your hand on that. Yeah. <laughs> And we no, kind of got it no, on no, camera. No, no, no. <laughs> Imagine, no. Um, well, I think, I mean, I do have a list of like the next ones I want to do. And for sure, one of them is Shikitinha, the word that my granddad used to call me all the time. 
So I, I just, I'm not sure where yet. So that's why I haven't done it. But I think I'm going to do it now in, in like a month when I go back to Brazil. Okay, okay. Because it's my friend that tattoos. She, she did them all. And it's like we do it at home because she just does it. <laughs> she does them at home. Yeah. yeah she, oh, but she's a proper... Well, yeah, I mean, she started like two years ago. Okay, okay. <laughs> but she got a machine. She's an insane artist, uh, like drawing and everything. And she started kind of like practicing on herself. And she was really good right away. So she started doing it to other people. Where is she based? In Brazil now, yeah. But she's she's moving to Barcelona. Her name is Pamela Munoz. It's a bit hard, actually. Well, I'll tell you what. If she When she moves to Barcelona, she has a page. We'll add it to the description of this video. And if yes. people want to go to a good tattoo artist, yes. then they can look her up. So maybe she's got an Instagram yeah, she or does, something. She if you let us know, and we can put it in the description. Okay, we'll add it in the description. <laughs> yeah, I would say that I'd go and get one myself, but I'm too scared. Also, my mum, no, but my honestly, my mum would kill me. I'm going to bring up Brenda again, but if I got a tattoo and my mum knew it was you that persuaded me to get it, she'd be after you. She hates them. Really? She would, yeah. Yeah, my mum is not the worth same. it. But then they kind of like get over it. Yeah, she won't get over it. Okay, I'm maybe, not. I'm not pursuing can, him. I'm not. I'm not. Maybe maybe persuade Pers Brenda persu why I should him. get a tattoo. I think it's just. So I don't want to do it. She's going to hate me. <laughs> yeah, she will hate you. She will hate you. No, don't hate me. I and you need her votes. Bad. Tattoos are bad. <laughs> I was forced to do it. Uh, and, and tattoos are bad. 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 <laughs> oh. Now, I must say that you're yeah. like so relaxed and calm about everything. Have you felt any pressure at all with this whole experience? No. Luckily, I mean, I think, first of all, it helps that... I, and I'm not saying this because they're here and they would kill me after, but they really, really... Like, the Portuguese delegation really is fucking awesome like i can't put it in any other words but it, it feels like family from day one and that immediately takes any possible pressure out of the way because they've been so just supportive and kind of like well we love what you do as motto and so you're gonna be motto whatever that means and so luckily no it's the opposite i just feel super supported and and you know loved and everything is kind of like just fun uh let's hope that doesn't change <laughs> but isn't it amazing to have that kind of support from your delegation and to be allowed yeah. to be yourself and have that freedom just to be you no it's it's amazing because I, I i think some other countries don't really get this um and I, I i mean it's it's amazing that you can just go and do your thing and and you're not told to put on some sort of clothes or wear makeup in some sort of way or do this or that and you can literally just be yourself and and the Portuguese delegation has been so good every year with that like just kind of making sure that the artists are true to themselves and they kind of do their thing uh, and I think immediately that gives us you know the confidence to 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 come and do this without feeling any pressure or at least I, I've been lucky not to feel any are they paid you for that or yeah they're they're giving me a check after this interview yeah it better be a big one yeah a, pr a, a big big one yeah. thank you rtp yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now i i'm uh, i love portugal i've been there before for eurovision i've been there before uh into in lisbon and uh the algarve in lagos um i want to know though if i was to come now and i was going to hang out with maru in portugal where would you take me give me like the three places that you think i should visit Ooh. Where are you taking me? So it has to be something. Well, have you been to Porto? To... I've never been to Porto. Porto is a must. I think it's a must, but maybe also because I'm biased. My granddad was from there. His whole family is there. I go every year and I absolutely love it. I think everybody's so nice and it's just kind of like, I don't know, a Portuguese Paris. I don't know if I should say this, but, but it's cooler. It's cooler. And then with really good food. Um, I'm all about the food. So what yes. food are we going to be eating in Porto? Oh, I mean, just our fish is really good. Our meat is... I mean, I, nowadays I don't really eat meat or fish, but I... I if there's a time to ruin it, it's in Portugal. Okay. If there's a place to do it, it's in Portugal. And we have just like... It's just good, kind of almost like homemade, you know, it's like good potatoes and there's good like rice, seafood, right? All these things. But when you go, I'll, I'll, I'll show you around. And then, you know, all the beach, kind of like the coast of Portugal is amazing. Oh. And... It's really, there's so much to see because there's like countryside, more like mountains. If you go like up north, almost in, like to Jerez, you have amazing natural parks, but then you can do the coast, all, like 
literally all the way down the south and you see amazing beaches and little like beach towns or you can get the city like Lisbon and Porto and even you know Viseu, Braga, all these places that are just so beautiful so there's a lot to see you should go for like six months <laughs> I'll go for six years. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. I'll be your guide. Well, and like, take me somewhere then where there's maybe off the tourist road. Like, where would you be your favorite hangout spots? There's some cool ones. There's literally, I could take you to a, a little, 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 like secret. It's not a beach, but you kind of go through a hole that people can't see from the road. And then you go down like a path and there's like just some rocks and like a place with water, like, because the water goes in. Maybe I'll, I would take you there first, because also it's in it's kind of like more near Kashkaish. Okay, okay. Which is Lisbon. You can drive and you can drive like on the like I guess RPCH, like the road that goes along along the sea and the river, and it's just so pretty. But there's so many cool non-touristy places. Uh, you have to go and hang out with a, with somebody from Portugal. Well, I'm, I'm I'm kind of asking to hang out with you because oh, yeah. <laughs> you're so cool. Well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Well, I can imagine in a convertible, you'll be singing to oh, me. I'll have my eyes closed. In a convertible. Oh, I had a convertible in LA and I had to sell it because of COVID. Oh, I, I have, have to admit, I, I cried a bit. Yeah, but I'm from the UK, so there's literally no point in me buying a car without mm, a roof. No. Um, but we've kind of had like UK Well, weather. maybe if you have an umbrella. No, that doesn't look good. <laughs> That doesn't look good. But we've had to get used to the rain since we've been here, right? Because yeah. I was expecting two weeks of sun. I'm sure you were really? too. I think with us, it was the opposite. We were expecting two weeks of rain, and then we actually got two or three days that, we, you know, with amazing sun and everything. It was great. Yeah, well, it's not amazing today. <laughs> no. Well, but today and, and yesterday, we didn't leave the hotel. Maybe that's why I didn't notice it. Oh. But um, is it, it going to rain tomorrow? Oh. I think yes. We've got our weather forecast right Well, I, I can I can rain. borrow you some yeah. some jackets. Okay, a cool marrow jacket. A I cool to be fair, I need styling because I'm hardly no, but rocking this, is this a shirt cool today. One. This is a good one. Do you like this? Yeah, I'd probably use this actually. Do you know it's the sound of I put this on specially for you tonight. Really? Yeah, because I, I had to it. I had to go home get fresh, put on a nice shirt. Why is he the nicest? Hey? Wow, well, thank you. That's awesome. That's super, like, on my on my vibe of style. And we're kind of matching in colours. Yeah. Kind of. Oh, well, actually, colours are pretty much the same. Look at this. There we go, I see. And the blues. Every, everything has a reason. Wow, even the white, actually. So, oh, nice. There we go. But maybe you could take me shopping and you could, like, star me marrow style. Ooh, I'm sure there's... Are there thrift shops in, in Turin? Have, yeah. Do you know? Oh, I need to do the trainer thing as well, because I've noticed every time I've seen you, you've got different colour trainers. Have you seen on. my socks? No. It's a little like wiener dog. Little dogs. With a little tree. These are currently my favorite socks. If I didn't have to wash them, I would wear them every day. Oh, uh, well, just buy loads of pairs. I know, but they're expensive. It's oh, like are they? Okay. 10 euros a pair. Okay. Well, you're a star now. You'll be able to afford it. Well, I'm still a poor star. All oh, right, okay. Maybe in, well, ay, that sounded bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe not after Eurovision. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, maybe in like in like 12 years or something, I might get a bit of money. Okay, okay. Well, look, uh, I'm so down with coming to Portugal. Our harder convertible car. We'll go for a drive around the beaches. You have to take me somewhere to get like the best pastel, I can't say Ooh, pastel de nata as well. Oh, like yes. I could eat Mantegui. it until it makes me sick. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, it's literally one of the best things that was ever I love when people come invented. to visit me because it's always an, an excuse like, oh, you have to try this, but it's really for me to, yeah, <laughs> to yeah. go and eat. It's, they're so good. They're really, really good. But uh, you've tried them. I've, I've had like thousands of them. Okay. From yeah. where? Porces uh, Blaine? From when I was in Portugal. I was just eating them all the time. Like anywhere? Yeah, wherever I could get them, really. Wow. Did yeah. you like them all? Because sometimes some are... In Sometimes you can get good ones. Where, where I was getting them from was a little cafe under where we were staying, and they were quite nice. Okay, because you have to get the, There's some like classic ones that are really like, kind of like oof. They yeah, just, I'm happy to try. Them. Honestly, I'm like literally one of my favorite things to eat. I'm happy to try them all. I, I, until I, I'm sick. I'll join you. I'll join you. Yeah, yeah, I'm, you. I'm down for that. But anyway, look, we're gonna uh, we're gonna wrap it up. But I want to know: Have you got a message for your fans and everyone that's supporting you? First of all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the song for supporting for all the sweet messages and and yeah at the end of the day just kind of just filled with gratitude like just 
Thank you for being here. And I'm going to do your job for you. And I'm going to say, guys, please vote for Portugal. We're going to get this amazing young lady through to the final. Um, and she's going to make you so emotional watching her performance as well. So vote, vote, vote Portugal, please. Portugal. Yes. Um, and then Andy can go on a holiday for Eurovision next year, 2023. 2023 in Porto, maybe. Porto. Uh, for sure yes um thank you so it's been such a pleasure to talk to you and find out more about you thank you um, thank you and i just love your whole vibe thank you you're making me like i don't know what to say thank don't, you you're amazing um and yeah hopefully we'll catch up with you again if we don't um good luck in the semi-final we know you're gonna smash it i um, think we're gonna get some other april in some other time no uh, yeah I've, look if it comes if Portuguese music, <laughs> drink and food. I'm I'm sold. So yeah, Perfect. let's do it. Next time I'll bring you a surprise. More than one. More than one. <laughs> it's like if I bring a you box. one, you're like, Mother, thank you, but <laughs> okay, a box of six. That's that's. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. Six will do. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs>